And this person asks, uh, I would like to know whether your belief in God has affected, has any effect on the music you write. Do you think God inspires you at all? This is one of the few questions where the person's name is at the end of it, Joe Finstrom. Um, when I do this in the future, it would be nice if people um, put their name at the end of their letter, because otherwise I, I don't see it. Um, so, uh, he wants to know whether my belief in God has had any effect. I don't believe in God or anything. I, 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 to me, God is a concept that helps people, you know. Um, it's a concept that makes people more comfortable with being alive and, um, and with getting through life. Um, and, it's, and it's a concept which causes people to be more moral than they would otherwise because there's this invisible sort of threat um, behind the possibility of dying and not going to heaven. And I, you know, I think that's all really... Um, really good stuff, you know. Um, I personally don't need any kind of threats to be moral. It's always been just my nature to be kind to people and to do all those things that the Bible recommends that you do. Um, <clears throat> I do them purely because that's the way I am. It's not because uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to go to hell if I don't do them. And, um, and, and you know, and I'm, I'm like... If you know, I, I'm sure if I if I felt a void in myself, or I felt some sort of need to search for uh, some kind of meaning or something like that, then I would I would maybe maybe I'd, I'd go after God, you know, as a way to fill it or as a way to um, to find what I was searching for. But I'm not really searching for anything, and I'm I'm really uh, in amazement constantly at the world as it is, and I think it's incredible just exactly the way it is. And I think there's lots of other worlds that are incredible too, in, the, in different ways. And I'm just really lucky to be in this one, and I look forward to being in other ones in the future. And, and um, you know, there seems to be obviously an, a, a, a deep intelligence that runs through everything, but I don't think of it as being one person or something. I just think of it as being the order of of the universe, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, to me when people say God, it, it, it kind of sounds like they're talking about one, you know, person who invented everything or something, I, that doesn't make sense to me, and it, I don't think it ever has, um, but no offense, like I said, I, I mean in all sincerity that I really think God is a great concept for to help people, and I think it does a really good job. Okay, this this question is is coming from somebody um, named uh, Mark Wilson, and they're asking about um, about the subject of first takes and things and. Uh, I was. They were saying I was just wondering if your solo music has ever come up in this way. Somehow they know that um, Omar and I in, improvised this Secretrice solo in four takes, and we we took the third take. Omar and I are both very impressed that you know that because none of us, to our memory, have ever said that in an interview. But it is true that it was the third take. Um, I I guess you know at the time of my first album. I don't think there's anything vocals or music that wasn't a first take. I mean, it's it was very unusual for something to not be a first take. And the same thing with the Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. All the solos, all the parts, they're always whatever I... You know, the guitar parts are always what I played when I when we did the basic tracks with the drums. And, and the guitar solos were always first takes. Um, I guess... There were situations where there was a second take, but it was my memory of it is that it was all first takes and and um californication was was pretty similar but um I think I was probably um I probably had less of an idea of what I was doing upon going into the studio um 
Whereas with Blood Sugar, I really knew the basic approach for every solo. I knew how I was going to start and how I was going to end and that kind of thing. Um, so doing it in first takes was, you know, partially due to that. Um, I guess on an album, like, by the way, I was, I was coming up with so many layered kind of guitar parts while we were recording it because that was the only time where I would really have the opportunity to see how one guitar part would go on top of another guitar part and things like that. Sometimes I'd work things out when I was at home, but a lot of the time there was a certain amount of experimentation in the studio. So I think once, you know, once once I'm clear on what I'm going to do as, as far as a certain part, then it's the first take after that. But I guess on that album, it was a lot about coming up with parts that worked in some kind of a textural way against the music rather than like improvising or something like that you know it was it was more coming up with some fancy high thing that goes with the chords in a certain way and figuring out new ways of voicing the chords and things like that so that's that's all a kind of a mental exercise um and uh for shadows collide with people you know guitar parts that I played with the drums or the guitar parts that we kept and that kind of thing. And I guess with the solos for that one, I was doing a thing where I would just kind of play a, play a couple of solos and pick out the best ones. And they were always, you know, the first takes was always keepable, but for whatever reason at the time, I just wanted to have uh, a few options and to just take a completely different approach for a few solos and just see which one's the best. So, you know, so we would do, like, three or something. Um, and uh, lately, I've been very much in that first take mode. Uh, it, um, the, the music that I've recorded since Shadows Collide with People has been very, very, very first take oriented on everything, from the drums to the guitars to the vocals and everything except you know again and except those things that we didn't have planned out to begin with that you just have to mess around for a little while but you know let's say like coming up with a bass line or something like josh and i just rehearse with drums and guitar so when it comes to coming up with a bass line it's something we just do in the studio and sometimes it just, i mean like the other day i made up a bass line while i was recording it and that was what we kept so situations like that happen but but um but sometimes you got to fiddle about for a little bit. But I, I highly rec I think, you know, you're doing the right thing. To me, uh, it's important to record quickly, you know. To me, the best music happens quickly. And to me, the best periods of time for music, like in, you know, in the 50s and in the 60s, and I, I think even, even uh, you know, a great deal of the records recorded in the 70s were all recorded very quickly. And to me, um, when you put that kind of pressure on yourself, I think it pushes you to be better and it creates a kind of an excitement on the record that people who do take after take will just never have, you know. So, um, you know, first takes forever. <laughs>